adenomatoid odontogenic tumor or AOT is a benign tumor of odontogenic origin seen in the jaws. The term adenomatoid emphasizes on the histological picture which is similar to that of a glandular tumor. Previously, the tumor has also been called as adenoameloblastoma and ameloblastic adenomatoid tumor as it was thought to be a variant of ameloblastoma. It was Philipson and Byrne who proposed its current name. In the classification of benign odontogenic tumors, AOT is classified in the epithelial group. That is, only the epithelial cells are neoplastic, not the connective tissue cells. Though, due to its limited growth and rare recurrence, some researchers consider it as a hamartoma. AOTs are more common in the anterior region of the jaws. Due to this location, AOTs get diagnosed very early when the lesion is small. Now, this feature is used by researchers to justify its classification as a tumor and not a hamartoma. According to them, the tumor has the potential to increase in size, but due to its early diagnosis, gets treated and does show minimum recurrence. AOT can be of two types, central and peripheral, though the majority of cases are central. Further, the central AOTs can be of two types, follicular and extrafollicular where the majority are follicular. AOT may arise from remnants of dental lamina or Hertwig's epithelial root sheath. They can also arise from any component of the enamel organ. The epithelial lining of dentigerous cyst is also considered as an important source especially in the follicular type of AOT. Clinically, AOTs are generally diagnosed in younger individuals around 20 years of age and are more common in females than in males. They occur more common in the maxilla than mandible and in maxilla they are more common in the anterior part. Majority of the tumors are associated with impacted teeth out of which mostly are canines. Due to these similar ratios, AOT has also been called as the two-third tumor as two-third patients of AOT are females, two-third tumors are seen in maxilla, Two-third tumors are associated with unerupted teeth out of which two-third teeth are canines. Patients usually complain of a slow-growing swelling in the anterior part of the jaw, though in many cases, patients complain only of a missing tooth and no swelling. The overlying mucosa and skin are of normal color. The swelling is not tender on palpation and has a bony hard swelling except for the peripheral AOTs which are soft to firm in consistency as they are present in the gingiva. On radiograph, AOTs classically show a unilocular radiolucency with smooth, corticated or sclerotic border. The type of central AOT governs the association of this radiolucency with the adjacent teeth. Like, follicular type shows a radiolucency associated with the crown of an unerupted tooth. This makes it look very similar to a dentigerous cyst. On the other hand, the extra follicular type is located near the roots of erupted teeth. In both types, the lesion causes divergence of roots or displacement of adjacent teeth. Few foci of radio opacities may also be seen within these radiolucencies, suggestive of calcification within the tumor. This feature is very helpful in distinguishing AOT from a dentigerous cyst. In the peripheral type, no radiographic changes are seen except for slight thinning of the cortical plate. The histological features seen in AOT are very diverse. The tumor is well encapsulated and may be completely solid, partly cystic or majorly cystic. Due to this, many researchers argue that AOT should be classified as a cyst and not a tumor. AOTs are extremely cellular with less amount of fibrous connective tissue. The epithelial tumor cells may be spindle, stellate, polygonal, cuboidal or columnar in shape showing no dysplastic features. These cells are arranged in various patterns. Most commonly, they are arranged in form of solid nodules. In higher magnification, areas of homogeneous eosinophilic material known as hyaline droplets or tumor droplets are seen in between these cells. Tumor cells are also seen frequently arranged in roset pattern and whorls. But the most distinctive pattern of arrangement of tumor cells are the duct-like structures. These structures are formed of a single layer of columnar or cuboidal cells. The nuclei of these cells are oriented away from the lumen. The lumen may be empty or may have some eosinophilic material. 
the lumen is frequently lined by an eosinophilic rim known as hyaline ring. It is these duct-like structures which give the term adenomatoid to the tumor name, as such structures are seen in glandular tumors like that of salivary glands. Those studies have shown that these structures are not actually ducts, rather are closed spherical cysts. Varying amount of calcified material in the form of irregular round bodies are also seen in the tumor. These calcifications exhibit concentric layered pattern also known as Lee's gang rings. Among the types of central AOTs, follicular AOT have a cystic component in them and the lining of these cysts often resembles that of a dentigerous cyst. Currently, it is unclear whether it is the tumour in which there is development of cyst by collection of mucoid material or it is the pre-existing cyst in which a tumour develops. Combined lesions of adenomatoid odontogenic tumor and calcifying epithelial odontogenic tumor have been reported where histologically both tumors are seen together. AOTs are diagnosed at an early age, are not aggressive and rarely show recurrence. Thus, they are treated by conservative surgical excision. The associated impacted tooth may or may not be extracted depending on the patient's age, tumor size and the possibility of the tooth to erupt.